Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Can you believe that we are already on the fourth week of studying the names of God? Can you believe we're going to study the fourth name today? I can't believe we've been, it's been that long, but it has. I'm so excited. I sure hope you're enjoying this series on the names of God as much as I have been enjoying it. Now, remember what I said last week about the reason why knowing the different names of God is so important? If you said so that we can know his character, so that we can become more like him, you're right. That's the right answer. So why don't we review our verse for this series and then we'll sing our song before we get going. Are we ready? Let's look over here at our verse for this series. Let's say it together with me. Here we go. Psalm 69, verse 30. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. So now we're going to do exactly that and we're going to magnify God with a song. We'll sing our song over here. His name is wonderful. And you know what? I think today you should all stand up. Let's stand up and get all the wiggles out before we get going in our Sunday school lesson. Get all the wiggles out and we'll sing the song. Are you ready? I want to hear you. Oh, wait a minute. I can't hear you. Well, maybe your parents can hear you while you sing so very nicely. Here we go. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. I cannot wait until you are back here with me in Sunday School and Kids Club so I can hear your voices and not have to listen to mine every Sunday morning. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed singing that song. You can all sit down. All right, now we have to review. We did our verse. We did our song. Oh, now we need to do our flashcards to review the names of God that we have learned so far. So let's look up here at these beautiful flashcards that we have. Thank you once again, Mrs. Cox, for all these. I love them. They're so colorful and they just make me happy. And they help me to remember all of the names of God. Are we ready? The very first name of God that we re, that we learned about, sorry, was Elohim. You remember Elohim? And look at the picture, because that should help you remember what Elohim means. Elohim means strong creator. That's exactly right. And our next word was Yahweh. And look at the picture, if you can't remember. Yahweh means God who saves. Very good. And the one we learned last week was Adonai. And Adonai means master. Very good. So we see that we've learned that God is our strong creator who has a plan for each one of us. And he saves us from our sins through Jesus Christ. And he's our master, and we are his servants. We learned that last week. And he blesses us as we follow him. And this week, I'm not going to tell you yet what the word is, but we'll get to there in just a minute. What a wonderful God we have. Don't you agree? He's just so wonderful, and I'm excited about what we're going to study about today. But before we do that, I'm going to do something very different this morning. Are you ready to do something very different? I'm going to read you a story. Are you ready? With a storybook. Now you might think, okay, Mrs. Hall, we're a little too old to have you read us a story from a storybook. But you know what? I like stories from storybooks, and I know you do too. And you know what? I want you to think about what the next name of God might be that we're going to study 
while I'm reading the book. So, so you know what you need to do? You need to get out your thinking caps. You need to put it on your head, tie it up real tight, and you need to think while I'm reading. Are you ready? All right, here we go. This is gonna be fun. Little Penguin and His Dad is the name of our story for today. Hi, my name is Little Penguin, and I am the smallest penguin at the South Pole. This is my dad, the biggest, most handsome, and strongest penguin of all. Look, Dad, the sun is coming up. Come on, little one. Today we have lots of fun things to do. Oh, help, Dad. The ice is so slippery. Wait for me. Oh, you can do it. Now I'll teach you a little trick. Wow, it's so much fun sliding on my belly. I'm almost as fast as my dad. Well, push yourself forward with your wings. Good, see how fast we can go? But be careful. In the sea, there are many hidden dangers for a little penguin like you. Never go near the waves without me. Okay, Dad. I promise. You see, my father teaches me many things. I try to learn as quickly as I can. Oh, there are very large birds here. Be sure to look up and run to me if there is any sign of danger. Oh, if I'm with you, Dad, I am not afraid. When my dad calls me, I go to him straight away. I recognize his voice and he recognizes mine too. Son, where are you? Oh, it's me, Dad, here I am. Now, stand close to the other penguins and we will all stay warm. It's so cold today. Thankfully, my dad has taught me a great way to keep my tummy nice and warm. It's freezing and so windy. There's so much snow. It's tough being a penguin. I'm gonna stick close to my dad. My dad knows how to do lots of things. Today, he caught a fish for my breakfast. Yummy, thanks, Dad. Oh, the sun is setting now at the South Pole. I'm staying up with my dad until nighttime falls over the icy land. This is our world. It's very cold and very difficult to live in, but we like it just the same. Let's go home now, son. It's time to go to bed. All right. Good night, Dad. Oh, now, have you been thinking? Did you have your thinking caps on during that story? Maybe you can think about what we're going to talk about today. You probably already know. But before we get into it, we're going to need to pray. But I want you to get your Bibles first and turn to Romans chapter number eight, and then we'll have a word of prayer and we'll get right going. Romans chapter number eight. Romans is in the Old Testament or New Testament? I'm sure somebody said New Testament, and you're right. New Testament, Genesis, Genesis, Mrs. Hall. What's the first book in the New Testament? Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans chapter number eight. Once you're there, just leave it open and we'll pray and we'll get started. Hands up, fold them, bring them down. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for every single person who is out there watching this um, video today. Lord, I pray that you would help me to only say those things you want me to say. And Lord, it was a very exciting lesson once again, talking about who you are and who you can be for us. And Lord, I just love you so much. And I pray that you would help me to say those things that would help the children to understand exactly um, who you are in this wonderful name that we're going to study today. Lord, we love you so much. Please keep distractions away from the children and from people listening. And Lord, we just pray that you would bless in every area of Sunday school today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, Romans chapter 8, I told you to turn to. Let's look in verse number 14. And we're going to read verses 14, 15, and 16. And I want you to be thinking, be thinking about where you see God's name in these three verses. Are you ready? Verse number 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, what is God called in this passage? Where is God's name? Hmm. Well, if you look at the end of verse 15, you're going to find it. And the word is, look down at the very end of verse 15. It says, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That is the word we are looking at today. The name of God for today is Abba. And you know what Abba means? It's an Aramaic word. Now, Aramaic was the language that was spoken at the time of Jesus. And this word, Abba, if you look in the verse, at the end of verse 15, the very last word says, Father. Abba means Father. So that's the name of God we're going to look at today. Abba, Father. But there's some sad news here for just a second. But God is not everyone's father. You might think, well, is God everybody's father? And the answer is no, he's not. I want you to look at verse 14. Verse 14 tells us who is who has God as their father. Verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you're led by the Spirit of God, that means you have the Holy Spirit in your life. And the only way you can have the Holy Spirit in your life is by being saved. That's exactly right. So God is your father if you are saved. So that means God is my father too. Remember last week that we learned that God was Adonai, our master. You remember that? And we are his servants. When God is our father, Abba, he, we are also his children. So we aren't only his servants and we get to serve God, but when Abba, Father, when God is our Father, we are his children even better. Let's think about fathers for a minute. And by the way, do you remember, did you figure out what we were talking about in our story? Yes, we're talking about fathers and how wonderful they are and the different things that they do for us as children. Now, let's think about fathers for a minute. Boys, when you grow up, what kind of a father do you want to be? See, there's a lot of thinking going on today, so you're really going to have to keep those thinking caps on. I want you to think, what kind of a father would you like to be when you grow up? And girls, I'm not going to ask you what kind of father you want to be because you wouldn't be a father. You would be a mother, but... What kind of a father will you want your husband to be when you grow up and get married? What kind of a father do you want your husband to be? Well, I we're going to look through some verses in Scripture, and we're going to see some things, some things that God as our Father does for us, and these are things that you're going to want to do as a father when you grow up, or you're going to want in your husband as he becomes a father as well. All right, so the first verse we're going to turn to is in Psalm. Now that's way back about the middle of your Bible, Old Testament. Psalm chapter number. Oh, Psalm doesn't have chapters. Mrs. Psalm needs to remember that. Psalm 32 and verse number 8. Now, if you can't keep up with me as I go through these verses, that's fine. You can just listen. All right, and I want you to think. Think about what God is as our Father. What does he do as I read these verses? Are you ready? Psalm 32 and verse 8 says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Hmm. What do you think that's telling us? What kind of a father is God? Oh, I'll show you. God is a father who teaches. He teaches us. And God, as our father, teaches us only good things, of course, and they're things that we need to learn. So that's very important that God, as our Father, teaches us. So that's something as fathers, fathers teach, don't they? Remember the story with the penguin, with Daddy Penguin? He was teaching his son, wasn't he? He was teaching him things like how to get on the ice and slide on his belly. He was teaching him that, wasn't he? And it's our responsibility as children 
right now with our dads that we listen and we obey as our dads teach us and even as God, as our Father, as he teaches us as well, okay? Psalm 91, just a few pages further in your Bible. Psalm 91 and verse number 11. And this verse says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now, hmm, what's that telling us about God as our Father? What's that saying? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. I'll tell you, this is protects. God, our Father, protects us, keeps us from harm. Remember with the daddy penguin? He protected his son, didn't he? Yes, he did. He protected him. He was telling him about the dangers in the sea and in the sky. And God does that too. God protects us from harm. And we can trust God to protect us. There's so many verses in the Bible that talk about God protecting us. I don't have time to go through them all today. But if you want to know sometime, the next time you see me, I have a whole list and I'll show you. It's very important to understand that God protects us from harm. All right, here we go. Next one. Psalm. We're still in Psalm 103. Psalm 103 and verse 13 says, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Now, what does that big word pitieth mean? It means to love deeply, to have mercy and compassion. So, now that you know that, what do you think the Bible's trying to teach us here about God as our father? Well... I'm going to put down, God cares. God cares for us, doesn't he? And in a little while, when we're done with this, I'm going to show you just how much God cares for you individually as a child of God. He cares for you. I'm going to show you just how much he cares in just a few minutes. Okay, here's another one. Let's go to Philippians. That's way back. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Philippians is way back. Almost to the end, but not quite. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So what does that mean? What does that show us about God our Father? Hmm, but my God shall supply all your needs. You know what that tells me? That tells me that my God provides. You know what that big word means? My God provides for me. He provides all of my needs. You know what? In Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, it says, But my God, I'm sorry, that's not right. <laughs> Let me get to where I'm supposed to be. Here we are. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God has told us that as our Father, he will provide for us. Now, that does not mean that God gives us every single thing we want, necessarily. Because sometimes, especially as children, you might think, well, I want a million dollars. Well, an adult, maybe. Some people say, I want a million dollars. Well, God knows that maybe that's not the best thing for me to have a million dollars. Or maybe it's not the best thing for you to have a big, nice, beautiful car that you can drive around when you're only 10 years old. Hmm, that's not something God's going to provide for you. Or you might think, well, my mom and dad, they never give me anything I want. Never. Because, and it's like, well, what do you want? Well, I want to be able to eat all the lollies in the whole wide world, the whole time, <coughs> every day, as many as I want. And I want to be able to watch TV until 3 o'clock in the morning. And then I want to play video games until 8 o'clock in the morning and not sleep at all during the night. That's what I want. And if my mom and dad don't give that to me, then they don't love me. Is that the truth? Oh, of course not. Those things, now, having lollies is not a bad thing. It's 
staying up and watching till TV till three o'clock in the morning probably is. And playing video games for hours and hours is also not a good idea. But they're not necessarily horrible, horrible things, but there's something you want and your parents know that that's not the best thing for you. So they provide your needs, not necessarily your wants. I hope that came across right. Okay. On to Romans chapter number eight. Here's another one. Romans chapter number eight. In verses 38 and 39, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from listen for it, the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What do you see in there? God our Father, he teaches, protects, cares, provides, and loves us so very much. So very much. And remember, I think I've said this every single week, but it's so true. God loved us so much. What did he do? Oh, he does so many things for us. But he loved us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins so that we can accept his free gift of salvation and go to heaven someday when we die. No father can love us that much except for God. Isn't that wonderful? That's wonderful. Okay, one more. First Corinthians, the very next book. I'm sorry, second Corinthians, the next book after that. Second Corinthians in chapter number one and verse number three, one more characteristic of God our Father. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. God our Father, Abba, comforts us. You know, when you're afraid or you're scared or you're sad, Bible says that God is the God of all comfort. He comforts us. It's wonderful that dad's comfort, isn't it? But you know what? As wonderful as your dad might be, as wonderful as my dad was, my dad's in heaven now, but as wonderful as my dad was to me, do you know what? My heavenly father, my Abba, God, Abba, my heavenly father loves me perfectly. He teaches and protects and cares and provides and loves and comforts me perfectly because he's a perfect father. None of us have perfect fathers because they're all human, just like we are. We're not perfect because we're human. Dads aren't perfect either, but our heavenly father, he is perfect. Abba, father. Isn't that wonderful? Now, I want you to turn back to Matthew really quick because I told you I would tell you this. Matthew chapter number seven. This is what Jesus, Jesus was teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, and he talked about fathers on the Sermon on the Mount. And if you look at Matthew chapter seven and verse number nine, he's talking about fathers, all right? And he says, Jesus says in verse number nine, or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? look up here. What Jesus is saying is, what father is there that if their son said to them, hey dad, can I please have a piece of bread? And dad says, uh, sure son, here you go. And he gives them a stone instead. What? Would a father do that? Of course not. If you ask for a piece of bread, I reckon if you had a piece of bread in the house, dad would give you a piece of bread. He certainly wouldn't give you a stone. Can you eat a stone? Oh, of course not. Or look here, keep looking in verse number 10. It says, or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Can you imagine if you asked for a can of, this is tuna. If you asked for a can of tuna fish, say, hey, dad, could I please have a can of tuna fish? And dad says, sure, here you go. And hands you a snake. do that? And that's what Jesus was saying. Look at verse number 11. It says, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, 
how much more so shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Jesus is saying, I mean, a father wouldn't give you a snake or a stone to eat instead of fish or bread. And neither is your heavenly Father going to do that. He is going to provide for you, and he loves you, and he cares for you and protects you. And he's going to give you good things when you ask. Now, look over. I have one more verse to look at before we keep going. Actually, I have a couple more. Sorry about that. But one verse. Look back at Matthew chapter 6. Just, this is just talking about God, our Father, and how much he cares. This is one that talks about how much he cares for us as his children. He cares so much for us. Look at verse number 28. In Matthew chapter number 6 and verse 28, it says, And why take ye thought for raiment at your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Oh, look at these lilies. Are they beautiful or what? My husband got those for me. Wasn't that special? They're so very pretty. He got me more than two. I just brought two with me today. Aren't they so pretty? And the Bible says... Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. That means they don't go to work, do they? No, they don't go to work. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glories was not, glory was not arrayed like one of these. In other words, Jesus is saying even Solomon, the wonderful king that was arrayed in all of his beautiful royal robes and his just everything that he had was not as beautiful as what these lilies are that who created. God created. And it says God cares for the lilies of the field. And earlier in the chapter it says God cares for the birds of the air. How much more is God going to care for me and for you, his children? He is our Abba Father. Let's look up here and, th and remember he teaches, he protects, he cares. He provides, he loves, he comforts. When you grow up, boys, and become a daddy someday, these are all things that you're going to want to do with your children. And girls, that man that you're looking for to marry, when he becomes a father, this is what you want from him too, because that's who God is. He is our Abba. Here's our pretty flashcard for today. He is our Abba, and it means father. Very good. Now... We have a verse for this week, don't we? Yes, we do. Where is that? Right over here. Right over here. Here it is. <laughs> Sorry, got a little lost. We have so many verses up here. That's a good thing. Here's our verse for today. I read it earlier when we talked about God caring for us. So let's say it together with me. Are we ready? Psalm 103, verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. God is our Abba Father. And we're going to go over these flashcards one more time because I do not want you to forget. Are you ready? Okay. Aren't you glad that God is Elohim, our strong creator? Say these with me. Yahweh, the God who saves, Adonai, which means our master, and the one we learned today, Abba, which means Father. Aren't you so happy about that? That's so exciting to me, so exciting, and we need to be thankful that God is our Father if we are saved. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved and accept that free gift of salvation so that God can be your Abba, Father. All righty. Now, we are going to do a craft today because we always do. And we're going to make a beautiful heart because that's going to help us remember that Abba, our Father, what's that word? loves us that's right and we're gonna make a heart to show that okay now mrs cox she made a gorgeous gorgeous heart here and she put abba on the front and you can cut out letters to do that 
or you could write it if you'd like to. And then she has all these little pretty hearts all cut out. You can draw some. You might even have some heart stickers at home and you could put on there. And now on the back, look what she's done. She has written our verse for this week on the back. Our verse, Psalm 103, 13, and she's written it. She's kind of gone around the edges and written it like as a father pitieth his children. So the Lord pitieth them that fear him, Psalm 103, verse 13. And she's got some little hearts in there too. Isn't that beautiful? That's so pretty. Now, I'm gonna show you what you have to do in order to make the hearts. Are you ready to listen? First of all, you need a piece of paper. The best color piece of paper, of course, is red. But if you don't have red paper, white will do just as well because what can you do with white paper? You can always color it and you can color it red. Now, I want you to see if you can see this pencil marking here. Mrs. Cox has drawn a pencil mark, just a half of a heart. So you're gonna wanna go here, come up, come around and then down to the corner like that, okay? And then, wait, yeah. sorry, I forgot to tell you that you have to fold your paper. To fold your paper in half and then draw that. And let's see if Mrs. Hall can get this to work. Then you need to keep your paper folded and you need to cut around your nice little pencil mark like this and hopefully, you will come out with a very beautiful heart that you can then go ahead and decorate. Look at that. Look at that. It worked. See? Ta-da! A beautiful heart that you can go ahead and decorate. All right? So you do that. And by the way, I would be very happy to have you send me pictures of these crafts that you do. I would love to see you do crafts like that so that you're um, doing the crafts and making them look so gorgeous, all right? Now, let's pray real quick before we're done with Sunday School. I love all of you kids and I miss you horribly. I sure hope we're able to meet together again very, very soon. But in the meantime, make sure that you're watching Sunday School every Sunday morning so that we can learn more about the names of God. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for today and thank you for this time that we've had to come together as a Sunday school class and listen to your word and just listen to these names of God and today especially learning about Abba Father. Lord, we're so thankful that we are your children and that you love us and protect us and you provide for us and you teach us and you comfort us when we're sad. Lord, we're so, so thankful for everything you do for us. Lord, we pray that the children would remember this and they would remember how wonderful you are in all the different names that we've studied so far. We pray for the names that we're going to study in um, the next few weeks. We pray that you would just help us to learn these things and to put them into our lives as well. We love you so much, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. All right. I will see you next week. Have a very good week.